In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is the second Sunday in the second Coptic month, Beba. And as we said before, the church focuses in the first semester of the Coptic year to offer God for every one of us as God the Father. He is a Father. Yes, He is a Master, yes, He is a Lord, but His nature he is a father. And the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is one of his father in nature, came to us to give us his father to be our, our father. And the church in the first semester, while speaking about God the Father and his mercy and his love and his compassion and his caring about every one of us, the church focus in this month how God the Father sent his son, Lord Jesus Christ, to give his church victory over four enemies. Every one of us, we have four enemies. They are struggling, every one of us, to enjoy our Father. And every Sunday, the church will reveal one of our enemies. And the victory that the Lord granted us freely in him over this enemy. So in the first Sunday of Baba, last one, the church said, be careful. The sin is your first enemy. The sin destroys your relationship with your father. So the Lord Jesus Christ, when they brought to him the paralytic man to heal him, he said, son, your sins are forgiven and they said no one can forgive sin except God himself and that was the mystery that God the father sent his son to forgive sins to give us victory over the first enemy which is the, the sin the third week the next week the church will reveal another enemy for us which is Satan himself the devil so they will, brought, they will bring to the Lord Jesus Christ a mute, blind, demon-possessed man. He lost his mind. He lost his life. And the Lord Jesus Christ cast the demon out. So this is the second enemy, Satan himself. And we have victory. I gave you authority to tread on serpents, on scorpions, upon all the power of the enemy. So the first enemy is the sin. And we have power to overcome the sin. He forgave our sins in his blood. The second enemy is Satan himself. And he gave us authority. He trampled Satan under our feet by his cross and by his resurrection. The third enemy, or the last one, is death. So the last week in this month, the Lord will go to Nain and touch the coffin of the son of the widow of Nain and say, son, arise. And he will trample death through his touch. So the first week, our enemy is the sin and the Lord gave us forgiven of sins. The third week, our enemy is Satan himself and the Lord give us victory over the Satan last week death is the last enemy to be trampled by the Lord and through his death he overcome death what about this week this week the Lord give us and reveal us the enemy is to lose the goal of your life to live a normal life to wake up early morning to go your work then return back depressed disappointed and to go through this circle from day to day to be pressed by the circumstances of the life to live tasteless life the problems of our life sometimes 
we think and we pray to live an easy life. And believe me, that is not the Christian life. It is not mean that the Lord wants us to suffer. No, he wants to give us rest. But the key to have rest is to suffer. So let us see what St. Paul said today in his teaching to the Corinthians. He said, for we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. The goal of the church is not to connect you with a priest. The goal of the church is not to connect you with an activity. The role of the church is not to connect you with the social media or the social community. The church is to preach Jesus Christ as Lord. He is the one who can give you victory over your problems. He said, for it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. God commanded light to shine up from darkness. So the message today, if you are living in darkness, if you are experiencing failure, if you are depressed, if you are failed, if you are disappointed, thanks to God. This is the first step to success. This is the first step to go up. God, who commanded light to shine out of darkness, commanded light to shine out of darkness. So let us go to the gospel today. But before going to the gospel, let us see the psalm. Shout unto God all the earth. Sing praises to him, his name. Give glory to his praise. Let all the earth worship you. That is the prayer of David 1,000 years before Christ. And that is, that is the dream of the Lord Jesus Christ. That the all, all the earth can know him and come back enjoying his father. So what is our rule? Do you have a mission to invite all the earth, the whole world, to enjoy their father? St. Peter spent a very, very, very hard night. Let us go to the gospel. As the multitude pressed out him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, and saw two boats standing by the lake. The fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. And the Lord noticed that Peter and his friends, they, are, they were so sorry. They were so sad. They were depressed as orphans. Unfortunately, my brethren, till now, many, they live their lives as orphans, as if they have no father. The Lord Jesus Christ say, I will not you be to be orphans. I will send the comforter, the Holy Spirit, to comfort you and to attract you to my father, to know that you are not alone. The Lord noticed that Peter, he was so sad. He was so depressed. The Lord went to Peter and said, Peter, can I ask you a favor? He said, yes, master. Because they were friends before. And Peter heard many sermons to the Lord before, as the gospel teaches us. They came out of the journey. They caught nothing. They, are, they were washing their nets. And I think Peter, when the Lord asked him this, this request, he was uh, trying to say, sorry, I'm, I'm not in the mood. I'm not willing to do it right now. But because of his love to the Lord, he accepted. The Lord said, can you accept me to enter to your boat and to teach, to teach the multitude? He said, yes, Lord, welcome. The Lord entered to his boat and he said, can I ask you a favor? Can you go just uh, a little away from the shore so I can see all the multitude and they can hear me? He said, okay, Lord. And the Lord started to teach. But while he's teaching, he noticed from now and then 
he looked to Peter to say, how is doing? He noticed that Peter doing like this, disappointed. He came to the church. He is hearing the sermon, but his mind is away in his problems, in his failure, in his depression. The Lord noticed that. And because he is so kind, he did not want Peter to be in this situation more and more. After he finished, he gave Peter a special care, special attention. And he said to him, Peter, he sat down and told the multitude from the boat. Now when he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, and be careful, the Holy Spirit, it shows here the word Simon. He did not say Peter. He said to Simon, why? Why he chose Simon, not Peter in this, in this verse? Because Simon, it is a Hebrew word means to hear. Sim'an means to yisma in Arabic. I want to change your life. My pleasure is to change your darkness to light, to change your sorrow to happiness. But do you will hear me? Do you will obey me? So four steps, four steps to live this change. Number one, to hear the voice of the Lord. Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Simon had a plan for a depressed day like this. I will go back home and I will start to start returning back to catch maybe by night. But the Lord asked him to change his day, to change his plan, to change his scenario, to change his vision. That's what the Lord is asking us to do right now today. Everyone, every day, I have a plan. I have to wake up at that time. I will go to my, uh, my work. I have a busy schedule. I return in this time. I will do this, this, this. But the Lord say, I want to change your life. Can you change your day? Can you change your schedule? Can you start your, your day with having time with me? Can you go deep? The Lord asked him to change his mind, to change his plan. Number one, to hear. Number two, to obey. Simon obeyed the Lord. He changed his plan. And I'm asking myself and all of you from today, try to change your day. Just put the Lord in the, in the, in the front of the day, the first place. He said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. I, I, I believe in your word. I believe there is nothing impossible with you. I will change my day. I will change my schedule. I will change my plan. Number one, to hear and then to obey. Number three. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in other wood to come and help them. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knee saying, Depart from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. Number three, to diagnose your problem. Simon diagnosed himself as he has some problems in his work. No, that is not your problem. You are not suffering from your work. You are not suffering because of your family. You are not suffering because of your uh, burden. Diagnose your problem. What is my problem? I thought I caught nothing. That is my problem. I will return back to my house with nothing that is not your problem so what is my problem you are sinful man you need to repent the problem is not outside you the problem is in you you need to remove your glasses you need to have the eyes of Jesus Christ sorry I need my glasses again You need 
the eyes of Jesus Christ so you can see everything good, everything blessed, everything great. Everyone saw Zacchaeus and they commanded him. And the Lord saw Zacchaeus and say, good job Zacchaeus, I'm so proud of you. The sinner woman, everyone saw her and they said, we have to stone her. But the Lord, when he saw her, he has different vision, he has different eye. He say, daughter, your sins are forgiven, go in peace. You need to have the eyes of Jesus Christ. You need to have the heart of Jesus Christ. You have to ask for this. Number three, you have to diagnose that your problem is not outside, that is something in me. Number four, and the last point. He and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish they were had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee. Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid, Simon. From now on, you will catch men. The Lord ordained him as a high priest. The Lord corrected his way for him. The Lord opened his eyes to know what is his goal. You are not happy because you lost your call. How is this? I'm doing great in my job. I'm doing great in my family. I'm doing great. No, you are not here just to work and to go, bo uh, to go back home and then to work from day to day the same. That is not your call. You are not here to be fisher of fish. From now on, you will be fisher of men. Number four, know your call. I will give you a wife. I will give you children to catch them for me. I will send you in your work not to have a salary. Yes, it is good to have a good salary. But I will send you to work to be fisher of men, to catch them for me. I will send you from a state to a state, from country to a country, from street to a street, to be a fisher of men. Like Philip, the preacher, that we celebrate his day today. That is the call. You will be fisher of men. And Simon, from that day, he forsook all and he followed the Lord. Finally, to be Christian is not just to come to the church every Sunday to have the communion. But to be Christian is to live the life of Jesus Christ, to follow the Lord. So Simon, Simon, if you are sad, if you are depressed, if you have many problems outside you, know that you have a father. He is a great father. He is a good father. He is a compassionate father. He sent his son to give you victory over four enemies. Number one, over the sin. Number two, over yourself over your selfishness, over to live your life for yourself. Number three, over Satan. Number four, over death. Blessed is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Blessed is the kingdom of the Holy Trinity from now and forever.